Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm so glad that you've joined us here at the Safford United Methodist Church. Today is a special day in the house of the Lord, a day that we'll sing songs together, hear scripture together, and be in the presence of God together. So wherever you are today, I hope you feel the presence of the Lord come upon you and give you peace. Holy and loving God, we come before you today with great expectations to hear a hopeful sign, to hear your love, to hear the scripture, and to hear a message just for us, for this time and for this place. Gracious God, be with us in us and through us as we participate with people all over the world on a Sunday morning to hear your word for us, that we would grow in faith and hope and love. Amen. The call to worship this morning is from Psalms 105, verses 1 to 3. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice.
hot time at the steps. Now, if you remember, after spring break, something happened. Some things changed. Remember, we couldn't go back to school. Remember, we couldn't go in the classroom. Everybody had to do school online. I every morning I had my uh, laptop on my on my lap, and I had to talk to students that way. They had to send emails. We were no longer in the classroom. Then, as the summer progressed, we had to do this in a store. And then, now, if you've noticed, if you go to a cash register, and it is this, between you and your cashiers. Masks, as well as the plexiglass, are separations. They're things that we know are to keep us from getting COVID, from having any type of germs come. And it's a type of separation. Because if you think about it, the governor wants us to what? Stay home. Don't visit people. Don't go into, that's why we have a six feet distance, like for me and my friend who's videotaping me. These are all separations that, yes, we know are to keep us healthy, but they're bothersome. And we're supposed to start school August the 17th, but what are we debating? Are we going to go in the classroom or are we going to stay online? I know at Thatcher, we're going to go online. I mean, we're going to be in the classroom. And so anyway, it's frustrating because what do I want to do? I want to be in the classroom with my students. Well, what Pastor Corby is going to talk about today is how um, or if there are any separations between us and God. Is there anything that's going to keep us separated from the love of God? Because remember, we know that God loved us so much that, remember, he sent Jesus to take away our sins, to pay the penalty. But still, we don't have anything that can separate us. It's not any mass or any plexiglass. All right, Jesus is with us all the time. In fact, in the Bible, it says things that might separate us or people think might separate us from the love of God which are death or life or principalities or powers things present thring to, things to come nor height nor depth or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God who is in Christ Jesus our Lord there is nothing that we have to worry about uh, that will separate us from the love of God Yes, we might have to worry about getting COVID. And yes, uh, we're going to have to worry about, you know, maybe if our loved ones are going to get sick or are recovering. But nothing will separate us from the love of God. When we're down, when we're happy, when we're mad, when we're sad, remember, nothing can separate us from the love of God.
before we hear our scripture today, I just wanted to set up what was going on at that time and in that space. Paul has just gotten finished schooling the disciples about why God sent Jesus to earth. It has to do with relationship with God. Sin separates us from God and I might add from each other as well. So back then, the way to ask for forgiveness for unintentional sin was to sacrifice a sin offering. Depending on the severity of the sin, it could be a small bird or it could be a big beast on the altar to atone for the sins that were committed. At this time the scripture was written, it was the Holy Spirit that had been sent to be the mediator, the intercessor or the referee between God and human beings. But after years and years and years, God sent Jesus in human form to become the final sin offering. Listen for the word of the Lord for you today. This morning's scripture is from Romans 8, verses 26 to 39. Pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the spirit. Because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is on the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Our scripture today begins with a word picture of the Holy Spirit groaning with sighs too deep for words. The job must have been getting way too much. <laughs> you know that feeling, right? When you hope something is going to go a certain way and then you realize it's not going that way at all, the way that you'd hoped for, and you, ugh. You know you either have to switch gears or completely start over again, ugh. In verse 28, Paul says, we all know that, I don't know about you, but whenever I hear that phrase, we all know, I have to stifle my laughter a little bit because if we all know, whatever it is, 
then we wouldn't be here listening for the word of the Lord and for direction in implementing our faith in our lives, right? The Bible teaches us that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. It takes a lifetime for each of us to find our purpose, and our purpose can even change over the years as we grow up and grow older. As we grow up and our age and our purpose gets a bit more refined, we grow into the tasks that we undertake and learn and grow toward the future that God has planned for us all along. Some people take longer than others to find their place and to see God working in their lives and to accept the call that God gives to them. And others, it would seem, never do hear the call and fumble and bumble throughout their lives. Paul writes, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And my response is, no one, nada, zip, zilch, no one can separate us from the love of Christ. But Jesus did not just come for the righteous, for the ones who get it, the ones who do everything in a godly manner. Jesus came for everyone, even the people you don't think much of, or you have no time for, or you look down on. They are on their own path, the same predestined path that you are on. For Paul tells us we are all predestined to be conformed to the image of God. Ev but everyone, really God, everyone, even, and, and God says yes, everyone. You see, we are precious to God before conception. God plans our entrance into this world. The Bible tell us, tells us that God knits us together in our mother's womb, and God has great plans for each of us. But we can get in our own way and make an ungodly mess of our lives. As Christians, it is our responsibility to walk with each other, to help others through the difficult times and messes in our lives, especially if we're walking close with Jesus. You know that guy, right? Jesus, the one who made all of the religious folks confused and angry enough to kill him? Yeah, that's the one. Paul eloquently goes on to preach to all of the people, and I can imagine him with fire in his belly, raising his voice and standing on his toes, addressing the religious faithful. When he says, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free, has set you free, free from the law of sin and death, for what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in each of us each of us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Paul tells us that the Spirit is still groaning, and we, the whole creation, is groaning right along with him. We have an obligation for this time and this place. We have an obligation as the United Methodist Church to show the way to others who do not know the way. And you know as well as I do that people are watching us. 
our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, the people at the grocery store when they see the cross hanging around our neck or the symbol on our car, they want to know what we know. They want to know what we know and they want to know what we have. And they want to know about the Spirit and they want to know about God and they want to know about faith. And they yearn for a life of peace. Don't we all yearn for a life of peace? So how's that going for you? How are you living today? Do you want to live in accordance with the Spirit? With your mind set on Spirit's desires? Today you'll have an opportunity to open your heart and your mind and your soul to the Holy Spirit. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. If you're in a place where you can, sit with both feet on the ground, relax your shoulders, know that where you are right now becomes holy space. With both hands, palms up, whether you're lifting them here or laying them in your lap, whatever is comfortable, Take a deep breath. Take a breath with that Holy Spirit filling you on the inside. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come to us. Holy Spirit, come to us. Holy Spirit, come to us. Grant us your peace. Take another deep breath. Let it out and relax your shoulders. The spirit you have received does not make you a slave so that you live in fear again. The spirit you received will bring about the adoption and your kinship in the kingdom. The spirit will testify with our spirit that we are God's children. We are heirs. We are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. The life that we put on means there will be times when we share in Jesus' suffering. And in order that we may also share in his glory. <sighs> Turn that groaning into a deep cleansing breath and know that wherever you are, no matter what's happening in your life, the Lord is always with you and available to you to hear your prayer, to hear your concern, to uplift you with the Holy Spirit and bring you peace. This is time in our worship where we bring our prayers to the community of faith and to our God. And there are so many things to pray for right now. And I know you pray for different things than I do. And, and I want to encourage you in that. That when we come together in worship, we come together and we bring all of our corporate prayers. 
So today, Lord, we bring, bring to you the prayers of the people, the people who are lonely, who are missing being in this worship space, who are missing giving big hugs or pats on the backs, who are missing having a meal with someone they love, who are missing traveling on vacations that they didn't get to go on. Lord, you know who's suffering and you know what their prayers are. But Lord, show us how we can be helpful to each other, that we can turn those prayers into hands-on ministry, loving the people. Lord, we pray today for people who have been laid off or who have completely lost their jobs in the whole pivoting scheme of this virus. Lord, we bring before you people who have lost loved ones, most especially Sally, who is grieving the loss of her beloved husband, Clay. Lord, for people who are suffering from loneliness, suffering from being in their house by themselves day after day, Lord, we give you thanks for cell phones and iPhones and, and cameras and all sorts of things that can connect us to other people. And we hope and pray that if people need that connection, that they'll feel free and confident to call us, that we would stand together during this time. Lord, we give you thanks for coming to this earth. We thank you for being human and, and having the same thoughts and feelings that we do when people are in trouble or when people are ill or when people are absent. So Lord, be with us as we pray to you this day. Today in the Lord's Prayer, we're going to use the words sin and sinner. A sin is different than a debt and a sin is different than a trespass. A sin is something that you knew you should not do and you went ahead and did it anyway. Boy, we've all been there, haven't we? And it's such an icky feeling that we just want to brush it off and not ever think of it again. But today, we will go together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if we were sitting in the pews today, this would be a time that we'd pass the offering plates down the pew, and everyone would put in their tithes and their gifts and their offerings. Well, today I have a special offering. I have an offering of change, and I'm going to be hopeful that this change will change somebody's life. Lord Almighty, you have blessed us richly, and we ask that you would multiply these offerings like you multiply the fish and the loaves, that we would be the hands and the feet of your Son, Jesus Christ, that people would know Jesus through us and be delighted to serve him. Amen.
I just want to give you an update on some of our church family that need your prayers. Last week I asked for prayers for Sally because we lost Clay. She called me and she's um, very thankful for all those that have sent her cards and have called. And she's very, very thankful for her church community. Also, I heard from Rachel and uh, they took Tony to a doctor in Tucson and the blood clot in his leg is smaller. Um, she's going to have to get him some uh, compression socks and uh, they're the going to go back in six months. Then we have two in our family that are in uh, the Haven. One of them, you know, is Ivy Bosch and she's in hospice and she's uh, not doing quite as well. And then uh, Gordon Gilpin. Uh, also, Lisa Angle asked for prayers this week for her nephew, Richard, who uh, had open heart surgery. I haven't quite heard an update on him, but um, just keep him in your prayers for his recovery. And uh, James is going to be having hip replacement on Monday. So uh, just keep all of our church family uh, in your prayers. Until we meet again, whether it's in this space, in your home, at work, or with a friend, Lord, we ask that you would continue to uplift us and to keep us safe and healthy, and that your face would shine upon us and we would feel your presence deep in our soul. God be with you till we meet again.